In load-bearing coal form steel structures, interior and exterior load-bearing walls are designed to support floor slabs or roofs and transfer gravity loads to the building's foundations. In addition, coal form steel framing can be used to resist lateral wind and seismic loads acting on a structure. Exterior load-bearing walls and non-load-bearing walls can also be designed for component and cladding wind loads. In this tutorial, we are going to show you how to design an exterior load-bearing wall in the new SteelSmart system version 8.0. To begin, from the home screen, we'll open the load bearing wall module and choose the exterior wall stud design template. The template opens with various design input parameters that need to be set. The user can assign the criteria and set up the wall stud geometry and model in any order. Keeping the name as wall 1, in this example, we'll start by adding the number of spans to the geometry and model tabs. The stud spacing, tributary width, and span height for each floor can be set individually, or the setting can be applied to all spans. We'll apply these settings to all wall spans using the Apply to All button for intermediate spans and set individually the first and last span settings. Next, we'll enter the design parameters. Starting with the design code input selections, you'll notice there are options for the International Building Code and the Canadian National Building Code. Previous versions of the codes can be selected back to 2006 and back to 2010 for the IBC and Canadian NBC, respectively. For this example, the 2018 IBC is selected. ASD and LRFD design methods are available. We'll select ASD as the design method. We can verify, add, remove, or modify the load combinations for strength and lateral deflection. There are also options to design for web crippling. Depending on connection types or locations of concentrated loads and reactions, the web crippling check may be needed. Options for considering standard punch-out or web holes and the strength increase of cold work of forming are available. Typically, for stud members, these items would be considered. Next, we can enter member data for each span. To begin with member input, we can choose to design the member based on the inputs or select check safety to analyze a specific member and bracing configuration. Moving forward with the design selection, the member type is then selected. SteelSmart system can design Sigma stud, standard studs, or optimize a design with both kinds of members available during solving. We'll leave the optimized section member type. Then we can select the member layout. There are options for single stud, two pieces back to back, and two pieces toe to toe. If you select either of the two piece options, you can design the fastener spacing to connect them. For this example, we'll select one piece layout for all spans. Lastly, we can enter minimum section dimensions and design criteria. The designer may have other space constraints or requirements that Steel Smart System can include criteria for in the design. It has options to produce design results based on exact minimum stud depth, exact minimum stud depth, and minimum stud flange width minimum depth or minimum area. Down the left side, we can move into the bracing inputs and add bridging to each wall span. Start by adding the maximum bridging spacing, bridging member, and bridging line anchors in one span, and we can apply it to all spans using the Apply to All button. We will choose Optimize Bridging Member in first and second span. Next, adjust the lateral and torsional bracing spacings, Lastly, set the distortional buckling rotational stiffness value. Usually, if this value is unknown, it should be set to zero, but in this example, we will add a value. Next, under deflection requirements, the absolute deflection and live low lateral deflection limits can be set for each span. The option to apply to all spans is available here. Following the deflection inputs are the loads. Dead, live, wind, and snow and roof loads can be applied to each span. A non-uniform load factor can be applied to the loading. This factor can help account for situations where roof or floor members are installed at different spacings than the bearing wall studs.
Once we add the loads for win, dead, and live load on each span, we can review the connection data and inputs. Right away, we can see a tabbed list of connections within the window. There is a small arrow to the right that drops down a list of all the connections. For each span, we have options to choose connection type, clip category, and clip name, and fastener data for the base and head connection. For this low bearing wall example, we'll set AL clips for the base and head at all spans. except the head connection of the last span we add LB clip. Now we can solve the problem by pressing the run button. The design summary will appear showing if each of the components meets the capacity and serviceability requirements of the design. In this case, they are. In reviewing each output section down the left side, starting with members, the software shows the design section, the actual and allowable forces on the section, and the serviceability check of each section for each band. Next, in the bridging tab, we can see the bridging members designed for each span along with its actual and allowable forces. The reaction forces used for design of the bridging connections are also given as output. The connections output tab allows the design to review the clip design. The actual and allowable forces are given as well as the actual and allowable forces of the screw that is used for the connection to the stud. The connections locations are tabbed across the top of the window. Next, we can review the factored and unfactored reaction on each joint in the design. The unfactored reactions for each load can be selected from the pull down menu. The designer is able to view the axial shear moment and deformation diagrams for each low type of low combination. These can be viewed in the stud framing model off to the right in the main window and we can change the diagram units also. Finally, we can review and export input and output data in the report module. SteelSmart System 8.0 now allows the user to show and hide different sections of the report using checkboxes for each section of the report. If you want to return to the input data and make any changes to the design and resolve, you just have to unlock input and it will allow you to go back and edit input. All right, that's it for this load-bearing wall design example. For more of the latest information and tutorials for SteelSmart System 8.0, please visit www.steelsmartsystems.com.